All right, everyone. This is where I spent the night. You can see the grass is like two or three feet tall. Pretty peaceful out here. That's why I drove way down here. It's way off the main road, and I knew nobody else would come down here. And throughout the night, I could hear moose walking by my car. I could hear the grunting noises they were making. And just as the sun's starting to come up, I could see one of their shadows walk by. Maybe we'll see some on the road. As you can see right now, I have to drive extremely slow. The ground is so uneven, it just makes the vehicle rock back and forth. I don't think this was ever meant for logging trucks, like the machine that cut down the tree is what went through here. I have like another thousand feet of driving at this is like one mile an hour to get out of here. This road is pretty good. You can get up to about 30 miles an hour. Mucky area. All right, I waited another hour for the sun to come up. Let's go start the trail. You see what I'm walking on right here? A lot of this is shale rock. Shale rock will give you flat tires if you run over it too fast or you slam your brakes on on top of it. There's a bunch of patches of this along the dirt road, but for the most part the graders have pushed it off to the side. That's how people get flat tires coming out here. I brought a full-size spare and I have a donut, but it really didn't seem too bad on the way out. It's about a five-hour drive on just dirt once you leave the pavement. Alright, so this is where we are. It's like a 20-minute walk over to the locomotives. And right here is what they call the tramway. We'll go take a look at that. I was actually out here yesterday. It's a pretty nice trail. This morning it's a little dim. That's why I wanted to wait until the sun came up. Because a lot of moose hang out on this trail. Because there's a really muddy part. And they love mud. It has not rained in about almost 10 days but yet there's still mud on the trail imagine coming out here on a rainy day you gotta have some rain boots but there are signs out there they have giant piles of lumber I think they're gonna build a boardwalk over it also uh, coming out here I definitely could have made it out here and back on one tank of gas because I only used not even half getting here it's about 150 miles, almost 200 miles on a dirt road. I have a, like a 400 gallon capacity, but as a precaution, I brought 10 gallons of gas with me because I'm not going to just come out here and leave. I want to drive around for a while. Also brought some food about 10 minutes down the trail. We have reached this is the railway. This big open space that we're now going to walk down. Pretty soon, you'll start seeing tracks. They ripped it up this far. Those are fresh. A moose was down here since last night. Because there was a lot of people here yesterday. And they covered up all the tracks. There's a lot of mud on this trail that attracts them. Just look at the evidence of this part of the trail. How much water actually comes here when it rains. And this is the bad part of the trail. You sink really deep in some areas. A ton of this mud. And up here, 
That wasn't down yesterday. See all these marks? Looks like a big moose was scratching up against it and knocked over the tree. Here's some more boardwalks. I gotta warn you, don't step on the ends. Like a seesaw, it'll flip up and hit you. I did that yesterday. Extremely deep here. This is where the moose hang out at night. All right, finally ran back into the tracks. You can see them down there. And for the rest of our walk, we'll be down right with the tracks. This right here is a siding, which we'll go check out later. Really cool. There's dozens of abandoned freight cars down there. And they've been sitting since the 1930s. Because this train track was built in the 20s during the Great Depression. They shut it down. They parked all their equipment, which is out there rotting in the woods. They parked their two giant locomotives inside of a garage, which later was accidentally set on fire in the 60s. They were ordered to burn it down because they were afraid of people getting hurt on it, but they later found out they didn't actually own the building. It was a lease, so that was an accident. You can still see some burnt parts on the trains, but for the most part, they're just rusted. There's also a tiny steam engine in the woods. A bunch of boilers, gears, parts. And right here, I would assume they maybe airdropped this. I doubt they carried it in here. It's a big open space up above it. That's probably they're going to build boardwalks over all that mud. Is what I would assume. That's all for. At the beginning of this hiking trail, we pass over the train tracks. And they made the trail go through that muddy area. These tracks do look pretty big. I wonder if that's standard gauge. Okay, so this is telling you you get a big fine if you try stealing any of the railway parts obviously a lot of people have stolen them because you'll see things are missing off the trains look at that this old railway switch just grew right into the tree i would like to see how those things used to work you see this entire thing is is the lever you push it over and this is the switch over here Yeah, there's going to be multiple tracks up here. There's a bunch more of those sidings. Here's another one. This was a 13-mile railroad. After the Great Depression, they never started it back up again because it was obsolete. It was more affordable to use trucks in the 30s than start the trains back up after sitting that long. Look at this. See that really small piece of train track? That is for what they call the tram system. Even the big train track here is a lot smaller than what you would see anywhere else. Usually these days the track is like two times as tall because trains these days are a lot heavier. And also if you notice ties have completely rotted away there's no ties out here at least not in this area there's some pretty good ties that are underneath the locomotives which I figure they must have replaced because I've seen some old pictures online of the trains all jacked up they must have been doing some work to make sure they don't fall over because you know they're heavy if the track rots they'll probably tip over Okay, this is one of the tiny steam trains. Let's get a look in there. Put the light on. There's still some pieces of coal in it. That's cool. Let's 
got some plants growing out of it. Okay, let's continue. The rest of that train is up here in the woods. Here it is. Looks like it belongs to that. You can also get to these trains by kayaks. You can get into the lake at other logging roads. A lot of people do that. Eagle Lake. And you also gotta think, what happened to all the railroad spikes? Yep, people stole them all. You don't see any of that stuff laying around. Okay, we have finally made it up to the locomotive. I can start to see its shadow. Look at all these cross sections, keeping them aligned. You see how it branches off? One of the locomotives is straight ahead on the grown in part of the track, and one of them's over here. Look at that. That must have come off one of the engines, one of the wheel rods. A bunch of random parts. You see all this track is going way over there. Maybe there was a third track. I definitely recommend coming here early in the morning because yesterday afternoon when I came here, there was a ton of people, but they, they left like two hours before sundown. So I guess before sundown's a good time also. Look at this little bridge made out of logs. This is the tram system that you would see on the map. If you walk up here, you come out to the... We're gonna walk up there because there's machinery that pulls this. See these tiny little wheels on that little track. It looks like they're way too wide for it, but I guess that's for it doesn't fall off that mini track. This system's actually upside down. This is supposed to be the other way. You see the big claws? They placed a log on top of the claw and it would go down through here. This is a pretty cool engine over here. Just the engine block. I actually saw the head of the engine walking down here. That's along the trail. Maybe someone was gonna take it. Look how far on the ground that thing sunk. Okay. Now the exciting part. Then we'll go take a look at the box cars. Two engines. This one's in a lot better condition. You see the canopy on that one is just non-existent. It's rusted away. Like, look at these ties. Those have got to be new. So they must have drove down here years ago. You can tell no one's been down that road in years with any type of vehicle. Maybe an ATV. That could be how they brought the logs in or those timbers. This part pretty much is still stable. That platform, most of the cab is stable. You gotta be careful, there's rusted, jagged metal everywhere. It's really easy to cut yourself on this thing. Whatever you call these, the drive rods, that's what I saw laying down in the woods. It looked like it came off the smaller one. Let's get a look at what it says about the train. I'll make sure all that focuses if anyone wants to pause that. There's a summer picture of it. 
and there's a picture of it working. Yep, back then all the box cars were made out of wood, so they're pretty dilapidated when we go look at the box cars that have been sitting out here for 90 years. You see this here? Like I said, these trains were parked in a building and they burned them down. That's probably what caused the rust so bad because if they didn't burn it down, it would have been protected with paint for years before it started rusting. But that really got it decaying. Now this doesn't look too bad. You can't see it from far away. Graffiti like that, I don't mind. They're just names as long as people don't come in with spray cans across the entire thing. Like when you come in here to this forest, they ask you at the checkpoint your reason for coming. You say camping or a lot of people say to see this thing. They actually have directions for it now. Years ago you were on your own and a lot of people got lost. Eventually they created directions. The old parking lot was actually right here next to the locomotives and you'd have to walk a little bit further. But they created another parking lot. I actually tried doing it with the directions I researched myself. I didn't know they actually had papers with the directions. I ended up having to use theirs because my vehicle, I was running over little trees that were three feet tall. You just couldn't do it. You need an off-road vehicle. I had to turn around and once I got to this massive mud pit, I'll show that road on my way out. Look at this wheel. There's a tree growing right through it. And you see the tracks would have continued through the woods. It was a 13 mile trail giant gear all oh, these woods are scattered with random wheels and yeah, we better take a walk through those woods afterwards yeah you can tell these trains burned because I've even found old cars that have been out in the woods a hundred years and they've never been that bad. See all this is hanging off the back? The trains used to have wood bumpers which have rotted or burned away. Look at this. That's wood. Well, that's cool. You don't see trains where that stuff's made out of wood anymore. There's still grease inside of the bearings. Oh, that one's rusted shut. Can't open that bearing. You can see it's really shiny. A lot of people climb up inside. Yeah, you see, I don't know. It looks like some parts are missing in there. All the pipes are taken apart. The whistles are definitely gone. And up front, this bumper's missing. Now this one has a metal bumper. This one doesn't appear to have wood holding it together. Okay, let's step up inside. Okay, here we are inside the engine. Floor is all rotted out. Let's look inside. The firebox is huge. Look at this. That's not seized up. Underneath, something's all rusted and jammed. You can see people have taken all the valves off it over the years. Let's get a look up inside. Because you can step right here. This is pretty stable. Like the sides of this look like they're crumbling, right? But they're so thick, the metal, 
it's sturdy. It's made out of copper. In some people's videos, they called this the ghost train. By the looks of this, it used to be pretty good, the paint, before it started peeling. step down on there all the parts that are shiny are obviously safe because a lot of other people like you see these holes even though there's holes there just look at this you see it's thicker than it looks I would never put all my weight on that part though okay let's get a look on top of the fuel box I think a while back they were actually converted to use oil, that's why it's more of a tank. <clears throat> Let me climb up on here. Anything in there? Would not want to drop my camera in there. Yeah, it does, it does look like a coal box. I heard someone in one of their videos say it was converted to burn oil okay I'm on the roof now look at that that slides open and shut the hatch up top okay let's see what's in here a lot of people go down there look how shiny the ladder is let's see what we got Pretty awesome down there. Let's check it out. Make sure there's not a bear. Not really much. I assume people just go down here to take pictures. Not really a reason to go down there. It goes nowhere. This big hatch right here isn't seized up. That is extremely heavy, that hatch. And here's the ladder on the back of the train. That ladder is also in great shape. Okay, let's go check out the other train. Hear that? There's a loose piece of metal me walking around in the trains making something inside move around. Got raspberries growing up on the roof. Just climb down on the back. Let's go check out the other train. This one looks like it's tilting. That must be why they replaced the track under this one because you see they obviously put new track under it. So if you look up this place online, there's some pictures of it tilting and they had to stabilize it with logs. Looks like this one has new tracks too. That's just a bunch of extra. Wow. There's actually still a piece of glass up inside of that w little window right there. No one broke it. Not the, the front one they broke. The side, there's, I can still see a piece of glass.
This bumper in here is all rotted out. See that thing fell as the things just rotted away. Well, this locomotive is not as sturdy. See, this is a door that opens up the hinge. Other hinge is broken. When you try to get up here, if you put your hand on this handle, look what it's attached to. You don't want to trust that. Put all your weight on this one. Now this one has no protection from my canopy, but yet the floor in this one is more stable than the last. Look in there. Big firebox. Now this one you can't even budge like the other one. It would move a little. The stairs on that one are really shiny. A lot of people go there. This one, the platform on the side, is actually pretty stable. Okay, let's just cl walk right up onto the roof for this one. There's a lot of trash inside of this train I saw when I was out here last night. See all that? And it's filled with water. What do you think? They didn't fill this with coal, did they? Someone said they converted it to oil. I'm unsure. This one here, you can tell a lot of people go down inside of it. Just by how shiny it is. Tell a lot of people must come out here during tourist season. Look at this. See that? There and right there, those are roof drains for all the rainwater on top of the engine can leave. And there's nothing down in that one. Just like the other, I gotta show it. See that? Nothing in there. But it would make an okay shelter. Right there, that step is pretty shiny. A lot of people climb up onto the roof. You can see it's shiny there. It's shiny along the edge. People walk out there. That must be pretty stable. See all those bolts? Looks like there's something, a wooden handle maybe. I just got up on the train to take some pictures and I'm realizing a lot of places on this train they actually repaired to make it safer for tourists. A lot of the things you'll find are loose, but they're actually very stable like that step right there was moving like crazy, but they fas fastened it pretty well. You just gotta use common sense on here. Don't put your weight on anything unless you test it first. Like this here is all stable, but you can't just walk out right there because inside the train here, look at that. The floor is just falling apart. If you put your weight on that, 
it might hold you. It's pretty thick, this metal. But if you fall through that, that's gonna cut your leg open. And you're hours away from a hospital without any cell phone service. Now over here are their sidings where they kept all their machinery. You see their stuff just rotting away. Now a few of the cars are in really good condition. Well, for their age, none of them would ever move again. Over here is how people access by kayak. Right down there by the water. Now you see, they just parked the train here and it disintegrated because the cars were made out of wood. There weren't any metal reinforcements, as you can see, just a bunch of stabilizing rods and maybe a brake line. We'll walk through between all of these in just a minute. The ones that are in decent condition are down here, where parts of it are actually there so you can see what they would have looked like. See that right here? That's part of one of them. I carefully make my way through all the twisted metal. Look at that, the trains are still hooked together. They were planning on using them again. See that entire side wall of this box car? And some of the beams are still here. This one, this is what I was talking about earlier on the trains. You see that really thick wood bumper? The ones on the trains rotted away. And because so many people come out, them climbing on it didn't help either. They just helped disintegrate the rotted wood even further. Look at this, the grease is still inside all the wheel bearings. They're still greased. I think the forest is actually protecting this stuff. The ones that are in the sunshine are rotting way faster with the, all the temperature changes. Just like some fences I have in the yard. Stockade fence that's underneath trees looks brand new while the other part looks like it's been there for half a decade. That's in the sun. Hey, look at this. Literally everything's put together with wood. See? It rotted so the whole suspension just fell on that one. Okay, this is the one I wanted to show. Here we have all the hand brakes. Look how fancy the wheel was back then. this you can see what they used to look like the back wall right there with that big x and here's the side walls they've been sitting here so long look at that that tree is starting to grow around it look how fancy their old wheels were new trains aren't like that and down here a big massive rock pile and it's the end of the siding this was put here to stop the trains this big pile I'm now walking up on and it's just marshland behind it right below that siding where all those are parked 
This is what I was talking about earlier. This one is standing the right way up. So they would have put the log down on top of that so it would grip and they would be able to pull them out of the water here a half a mile that way into the other pond to transport them. They used to float the logs the best way of transportation back then before they had roads and trucks. Look at that gigantic gear. This must have had something to do with the tram system. There's a big piece of concrete there with a tree growing on it. Look at this huge chain. This gigantic pulley. And there are more pulleys like that. We're gonna walk to the tram station. Just a moment. Eagle Lake, Beaver Lodge. Huge gear here. It's probably where they pulled in the logs. At least in the summertime, you can't see the trains, any of the stuff from the water. So you have to know where it is if you're kayaking. Gotta be careful with every step. Here's some more cable. And what is this thing? Maybe that thing I saw earlier wasn't a train, maybe it was just stationary, like whatever this is. Some big pulleys on that. Look at that, some of the grease is still on the gears. Look at that, it's a giant wheel of cable. Okay, let's see. Walking the other way between the rail cars. Some of these are standing up better than those other ones. Still got some cross beams. Look at this tree. It looks like it, as a baby, its seeds started growing on some of the beams. It got too heavy and it crushed the train, but thankfully its roots were still touching the ground so it's able to support itself. And we got some box cars up here that are in decent shape considering their age. Looks like that's it. Look at this, the roots of the trees are just ripping up the rail. Here's an old switch. You can kind of see how that would work back then compared to today's switches. The entire thing is a handle for leverage. And you see it pivots on here. When this gets thrown, it pulls on that bar coming out here. This bar, you can see how it moves back and forth. It's a lot simpler than today's. Today's have a little gearbox. It's more complicated, but it's usually easier to throw a modern one. And the track is ending right here. 
they tore up this little section. You can see there would have been another switch. And this is the last rail car. If they didn't tear up everything, there would be a good switch here. Now this is gonna go back to the main trail. And we come out right behind that steam boiler. If it was a train or it was just for power, who knows? There's a ton of little flies living inside of the coal box. Or that would be the fire box, but there's still coal in it from years ago. And now I'm walking towards the big engines again, and I'm going to take a right so we can go look at them. All right, after a six-tenths of a mile walk, we've come to the tram station. There's this lump of dirt going all the way through the woods. It's elevated just like a train track where they have that mini tiny track you're seeing right there. And just like with the steam trains, they rebuilt the end of it. I obviously had to cut out myself walking because it took like 20 minutes. You see, you got this tiny little train track on the regular size ties. And up here is the example. They have the log on top of the teeth and it would pull it through the woods. Here's an old picture of this exact same place. There's the engine house that was burned down with the two trains inside it. Not one thing looks the same. Not the land, nothing. Over here does. You can kind of see that, right? That picture. Now, then. Huh. Okay. They just elevated that part so it would stand out. But the regular track goes all the way down to where those steam trains are. Let's go take a look around here at some of the machines. See, it goes right down into the water to pull logs between the lakes. I guess this was more efficient to them back then instead of just having the train pull down here. Okay, you see where I am now. The ties and everything, I've rotted away. East Boston, Massachusetts, 1901. Well, this thing had like a 500 mile journey from where it was produced. A bunch of bolts in there. Does this open? Yep. It's pretty cool. Does it still lock? And we have another one. Look at that. It goes up, collects air from the middle, and straight up. It's cool how they have that open for extra air. And that's a modern piece of pipe. Look at the size of that belt. How does it not slip off of that? It's amazing. I wonder if that's the original belt or they put it here for show. Let's 
also the steam train ran this thing across into a gearbox and a massive pulley right here which is sitting in the water and it would have pulled that cable more than half a mile and down here look at these things that's to pull the logs out of the water got those big spikes on top of there those are pretty sharp that would hurt if you stepped on that with thin shoes bunch of moose come out here their tracks are absolutely everywhere last night sleeping out here I could hear them grunting but it was so pitch dark couldn't see a thing until in the morning 4 a.m. the Sun started peaking and I could see one of them their shadow they were standing nearby now right here you can see they definitely put new wood did some concrete work to make sure this thing stays here. It looks like there's a fire here. That's amazing. And they have this whole thing opened up so you can take a look on inside. That whole thing was probably filled with oil once. Keep that thing well lubricated. Two fire boxes. As you can see from me standing there, those gears are about six feet tall. The one sitting in the water is more like eight feet. This chain is frozen shut. Such a clean place. while back it looks like they had a boardwalk kind of walking to the edge in case these break looks like it would have went around to where I just was all right I'm gonna start walking back I'll show a little of the tram system hope everybody liked these trains and now the rest of the video is gonna be showing the road back some places of the road are really bad. Some other places are good. The speed limit on the road is 45 miles an hour. Most of the time, you're able to go like 25 comfortably. And some places I got to almost 50. Other places I had to crawl at a two miles an hour because you were driving over these big rocks in the middle of the road. Some places the culverts got clogged. It washed out all the dirt. You have to go over it so carefully. One spot I slightly bottomed out, but all it did was scratch one of the plastic panels under the car. My car is uh, eight inches off the ground. So uh, if you were to come here with an actual car, I don't think you'd make it. I have not seen one actual car out here. It's just trucks and SUVs and Jeeps. But you can definitely come out here without an off-road vehicle. People always complain, all the other videos of this place, oh, you're going to get a bunch of flat tires. I actually bought a full-size spare because all I had was the donut just in case I got a flat out here. And the road wasn't that bad. There is a lot of shale rock patches, but when you get to that, you got to slow down. And also the areas where 
the dirt got washed out and it's all just a bunch of big rocks you got to go really slow because you could break part of the suspension going over some of them and some of them come without warning it'll be super smooth and you're going 40 miles an hour suddenly go around a corner you got to slam on your brakes there's a whole bunch of potholes i'm going to show a bunch of the road damage Look how the trees grew right through it. The cable's going right through the tree in a whole bunch of places. Ton of woodpeckers you can hear out here. Here's the head of that two-cylinder engine. Somebody moved it from down there very recently. That tree didn't fall too long ago. There's still sawdust, I'd say, in the past week. Just walk down a little ways. See this switch here? I just unlocked it and tried moving it. It's all rotten and everything but it's still connected because I could see the bar trying to move. Here we still got some ties. Pretty rotted though. Can't really walk any further. So many trees. This part of the track is underwater. And right there was a mudslide at one point completely covering it up. All right, it paid off. 45 minutes later, I walked through like a mile of that blowdown area. The moose like created a trail up around it. There's more train cars here. It looks like there's a siding down here. The track is really grown in. Because people don't really walk here. But there's like a dozen more train cars. Dilapidated. We still got snow underneath these. Ah, there's more like three dozen of them. Now there's another siding starting with a whole bunch more. This trail is going to be real unpleasant in another week. Today there's no mosquitoes. If you look in the water, there's mosquito larvae in there. I can see it swimming around. I also saw a bunch of that in the parking lot. I'm back. I always keep some water in here. That's for washing up and I have this thing. It's really efficient for spraying off boots. It's like a little pressure washer. It barely uses any water to clean up. Got some bug spray in here. A whole bunch of trail mix, jerky, canned food, snacks and stuff. I actually use this pan for washing up. And I got my spare tire right here. I just bought that the other day. I keep it right here. It's the only place I could think of because when you go over a bump, I don't want it flying. The back seat, I backed it up really tight against this to keep it in place. And this is where I slept last night. I have also have a bunch of drinks in here. And up front, I have two five-gallon gas cans, which I'll add to the car. On the way back, they gave us a map of the entire state of Maine at the checkpoint. They also gave this. This is directions on how to get out here to the trains and they also gave me another paper I have to sign my name and give the time I leave just to make sure I leave because if you don't check out they'll go search for you. There's also a whole bunch of these frost heaves that come out of nowhere. You see that? It looks like nothing but boom! If you go over that at full speed, things go flying in the car. Right here off the main road. This is the old road that I tried attempting yesterday. I went through this mud pretty well. I would have got stuck if I stopped, but I sped through it. So I think this is my tire tracks right here on the side. Yeah, that is my tire tracks. Looks like barely anyone goes down here. This is what I'm talking about. You have all these little 
trees brushing up against the bottom of the car you could hear it not a big deal it's not going to damage anything but when you get down there that is what made me stop there's like a really deep pool of mud right there and this is like three miles long i didn't know what to expect so i went there new way the road here is well maintained but over here, this is what will slash your tire. This stuff is extremely sharp, even against your finger. If you have one sticking up like this straight, that'll puncture a tire. And if you go over here and you slam the brakes on going through that, you'll surely get a flat. And there's areas where the entire road is like that. You gotta go, I go like five miles an hour through that. It's better than getting a flat. And it doesn't last long. It only takes a few minutes to go through that area. When they log an area, they always leave a couple trees like this standing. That way, they drop new seeds and they can log it again in another 40 years. And on the way up, you pass by a few logging camps. Right here on this part of the road, they have a bunch of colored ribbons telling you to slow down because you can see there's a lot of shale rock and that will pop your tires. Oh, look at that. A moose. I saw it standing in the road and it just ran where it's standing. Take a look at this culvert pipe. Sinking, making a big divot in the road. Take a look at this culvert. That's not going to help out at all. Potholes there. This gigantic frost heave just lifting up the road and they marked it so people don't hit it. There's frost heaves everywhere. We got a collapsed culvert pipe right here. Look at all that dead wood. Now here's a really bad section of road. You gotta go over this at like two miles an hour. Really, really bad. But it only lasts a minute. Then you can get going 30 again. All right, look what we have here. Look at that culvert pipe. It's a big bump in the road. It's all sticking up, not even working. This is just gonna flood over the road next time it rains. Look at that culvert, it's like shredded. You could tell it was going through here, the last storm. It looks like they maybe did some smoothing out, but look what it was. Probably one of the loggers did this, put a bunch of logs there to get over it. But it looks like it, yeah, it, it washed out since they did that. Look at the logs are all out there in the woods. That's a bad washout. Most likely caused by the beavers. Okay, let's get going. All right, here we have another culvert. This one is really bad it's completely smushed and it made this big dent in the road if you can see that that's like six inches deep that is quite the impact when you hit that this one's even worse this one's like a 10 inch dip in the road 
Right here we have a pretty deep washout. You see that? The road is so packed right there. This here is like 18 inches deep. Because of the heavy trucks, it gets so packed it actually looks like asphalt in a few places. Years and years of being packed. And all this erosion is exposing lots of shale rock. And shale rock is what will pop your tires. Right here is some shale rock. You see how sharp some of those pieces are? You hit that at the right angle, you'll get a flat. Look what we have here. This culvert. A big hole in it. Look at that. Right down to the water. <laughs> 